Hi everybody, this is Gregor from Personas and today I want to talk to you about the brand new Listen Bus that we have in Studio One 5, which is amazing, especially in combination with Reference 4 by Sonarworks, a speaker, room acoustic and headphone correction software. And I want to talk a bit more about that right now. So first of all, why do you even need room acoustics or acoustic correction softwares like Sonarworks in the first place? Well, especially if you're not sitting in the perfect studio environment, but rather in, say, a home studio, but you're still an ambitious hobbyist or you even have, you know, professionally paying clients, then you need to make sure that your mixes that you do at your home are also translating well to the rooms and speakers of your customers of all sorts and sizes. That's not always the case though, because if you're sitting in an untreated room, not only do you have to deal with the classic issues of modal resonances and reverberation, but you also deal with very uneven frequency responses. And these ones are exactly what Sonarworks Reference 4 can correct so beautifully for you, not just for headphones, but also for speakers. Had I had such a software back when I moved into this studio, I could have saved hours and weeks of work where I was trying to get the best possible frequency response and I still couldn't get like past maybe plus minus 60 B or so. Which is really impressive for a room this size, but if you hear that you can eagleize that to zero across the whole frequency range with one single click, that's an absolute eye-opener and yeah, I've been blown away by it. So first we go to sonarworks.com and download the installer. We can either start out with a free trial or if you've purchased the bundle already, then you find your serial number inside of the Sonarworks reference microphone box. Because yes, the microphone is actually included in the bundle and that's really, really awesome because you can deduct the individual frequency response of that microphone from your room measurement. But more about that later. After downloading the installer, we just go through the terms and conditions here, accept them, and then we get the choice to install either the headphone or the studio edition. In this tutorial, I want to walk you through the entire process of calibrating your speakers. So naturally, we're going to go for the studio edition here. After the installation, we can start Reference 4 right away. And in case of macOS, we might also have to grant permissions that the software can use the audio input. Now we can also connect our included microphone to an available microphone input. Please make sure to use a high quality non-coloring preamp if available so that you don't have skewed measurement results. Also make sure to activate 48 volts phantom power so that this mic is getting the power it needs. Once everything is connected, we can go through the setup checklist here just to make sure that we haven't forgotten anything. We have phantom power activated for our microphone so that it's powered properly. We have made sure that the microphone input is not directly routed back into the speaker output because if you want feedback, that's how you get feedback. Then we are using a single audio interface for the mic input and output to the speakers and the audio interface sample rate is set and has to be set exactly to 44.1 kilohertz. Of course, after that measurement, you can set it to a higher sample rate if you want. Next, we can enter the serial number of the provided microphone. And that's something that I really appreciate because we can load up the individual microphone calibration profile that was done when it was tested in the factory and deduct that from our measurement so that the individual flaws and differences between these measurement mics are not considered. Hats off to you, Sonarworks. Now we have to specify which of our inputs we use to connect this microphone and also to which output our speakers are connected. Okay, and now we're almost ready to start our very first measurements. However, first we need to make sure that the microphone is exactly at the height at which we're gonna sit because we are measuring our listening position, right? And for that, I have a really cool tip for you. Just get one of these microphone clamps here and then you put that on a microphone stand which you can adjust exactly to your ear level. Now you've also ensured that there won't be any differences or variances in height while you do all your measurements. Additionally, this ensures that your microphone is always plenty far away from your body. With that, everything is ready for your very first measurement. So take your mic and as shown, center it exactly in between your two speakers. After the countdown, we're hearing these interesting bird-like sounds and we need to make sure that the microphone is picking them up at the right level. So increase your mic input gain until you reach that thumbs up area. 
Next, we need to measure the signal from the speaker's mid-range driver and we need to do that from a close proximity. So make sure that you're standing on the outer side of your speaker so that your body doesn't become a reflection point for the sound waves. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Yeah, and you better get used to these kind of sounds quickly. Um, there's more where that came from. Left speaker done. Nice. Now we just have to repeat the exact same process for the other speaker and then we can proceed with the actual measurements of our room. What really impressed me, by the way, is that Sonarworks Reference 4 already knew at this point in time how far my speakers are standing apart from each other on the centimeter. Is that still science or is it black magic? I can't tell. After another really speedy test, Reference 4 knew pretty much everything there is to know about the stereo triangle in my room and also that measurement was almost exactly correct. Yeah, almost frightening. Now we can proceed to the entree and that means we're gonna repeat the measurements no less than 37 times because we want to make sure that we can move around in our listening position slightly, tilt our head to one side or the other without losing our hard-earned frequency linearity. It is a bit of a tedious process, but you can do it start to finish within 20 minutes or less, guaranteed. And the result? Wait for it. Tell me that wasn't worth it. Just kidding. So let's look at the frequency response graph that now shows up on our screen. And it's really fascinating to look at these things, right? I mean, sometimes we're arguing about, you know, subtle differences in the frequency responses of speakers. And then we're sitting in rooms that can add, as you can see, plus 6 dB, minus 3 dB, so 9 dB total of variance. And that is in a good room, mind you. If I sat in a bad room, this could be up to plus or minus 40 dB. And hearing how Sonarworks can eagleize that to plus minus zero, that is an effect that I had not anticipated like that and is likely one I won't forget very quickly. Moving on, now we can just enter the name for our speaker profile, which is Presonus Eris 5 XT. And now we see that Sonarworks system-wide has been set as our default system output in our operating system. This means that even when I'm not working in Studio One, I can still benefit from that perfectly calibrated sound system when I'm just enjoying listening to music on Spotify, iTunes or wherever. In Studio One, we can either set Reference 4 as our playback device, which does result in a high latency, or we can just use the Genius Reference 4 plugin, and that has a true zero latency mode, which adds literally 0.0, .0 milliseconds of latency to our project. Since we now have the Listen Bus in Studio One 5, using the Sonarworks plugin is as easy as it can be. You simply activate the Listen Bus, then assign it to the exact same main out and then drag and drop your Sonarworks plugin into this listen bus. The great advantage of doing it this way is that you never run the risk of actually printing your room correction software into the mix down. If I learned one thing about Sonarworks Reference 4, it is that hearing is believing. I did not think that in a room that's already as optimized as mine, it will make any kind of difference, but boy was I wrong. Hearing how plus minus 6 dB is suddenly being eagleized to zero has turned my great sounding room into a perfect sounding room and my first reaction to that is actually on camera. So allow me to finish the video with that impression and I hope that you get to experience it for yourself. No more second guessing, no more car tests and being able to integrate Sonarworks Reference 4 so seamlessly into Studio One 5 thanks to the Listen Bus. Yeah, do I recommend this product? Eine Wand aus Schiefergestein zeichnet die Höhle, trete jetzt ein unter Tage. Ort des Geschehens, hohe Städte des Hilflos.